Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of It Came From Craigslist, where I am your host, Yami Noob, and I do the unholy task of scouring your local Craigslist market for some crazy, bonkers, and otherwise weird Craigslist motorcycle listings. Today we're looking at Chicago, Illinois. Chicago is the third most densely populated. Let's double check that. My browser auto-corrected to Chicago Craigslist. That's, that's how much it knows me. Yes, it is the third most populous city in America. Just kind of crazy. I feel like people kind of overlook Chicago, uh, but it's a, a really major US city. I kind of never think about it, but it's pretty big, yeah. Uh, Chicago, not as insane as Cleveland, but uh, still some pretty interesting, some pretty wonky motorcycles in here. I um, think you guys are really going to enjoy this one. Quick shout out before we begin, though. Uh, I am selling merch again. Um, I realized that I had a bunch of stickers and reservoir covers left over. So uh, if you click the link in the description below or the comment that I'll pin on this video, uh, you can check that out. Got stickers, got reservoir covers, got a combination of both if you'd like to buy both of them. Um, so yeah, check it out. Let's jump in. First up, we have this 1978 Yamaha XS400 replica TD2. Guy wants 1290 for it. Pretty decent price for it. Um, this looks like a custom build of some sort. Uh, although, you know, it's funny because you look at the, the, the gas tank and the seat and you're like, whoa, this thing's really interesting, but um, he's got a shot here of kind of a close up of the forks and the speedometer. And you can tell this is one of those like, 15 foot kind of bikes where 15 feet away you're like damn that thing's sick but then as you get up closer you're like oh that's not so great so this guy says tired of the overused cafe racer look but still want a bike that stands out from the crowd here's a 1978 yamaha xs 400 modified to replicate the look of the yamaha td2 you might have seen at the grand prix in the 70s my dude i was born in 1992 uh would not have seen this in the 70s. <laughs> Pretty cool little bike, I think. Um, I think it's interesting because, you know, it's definitely uh, a looks over performance sort of bike. I mean, the tires look really aged, really tiny. So I think you'd get a lot of cool looks for it because like, well, that's a really interesting motorcycle, but um, don't know about the actual performance of it. Also, those bars look so impossibly low. I know it's a cafe racer, but you're gonna be like, way down here with it. 1290, not bad, moving on. Up next, we got uh, Harley Davidson for 15 grand. Uh, hope that it comes with this, this sweet daddy for this motorcycle. Um, I hope he is included in the package deal. It says 140 horsepower, two inch old school open primary. I'm assuming that has something to do with the exhaust, which is why Harleys are probably so fucking loud. Um, solo seat with springs, springer front end, wide front tire look, never dropped, awesome bike. Yeah, this looks like a, honestly, of all the Harleys I've seen on Craigslist, um, this looks like a decent one. It's not some insane chopper. It's not some crazy done up thing. Uh, the price I think is reasonable for a Harley. Uh, it doesn't say what year and doesn't say what it is. So it's kind of like, well, what am I really looking at here? Um, but I think my perception is also skewed on these because I've only ever seen $50,000 30-inch front wheeled massive stupid Harley. So I have no perception of what these should actually cost. For me, I'm like 15 grand buys you a top-end leader bike of a current year. So I don't understand why someone would pay that much for a Harley. But I digress. I also like how this guy has screenshots of the listing of the bike that is for sale. Uh, it's the same thing it's just crappier from a cell phone so i think that's hilarious 15 grand's kind of nuts would definitely not pay that for this honestly um but yeah if you want a harley with 140 horsepower this is yours i i kind of doubt that it has 140 horsepower i'm not gonna lie um not really seeing how that's possible but maybe it's all modified who knows moving on <laughs> we got a 2009 Suzuki Habusa motherfucker for 12 grand. Uh, the first image that pops up on here is just a big beefy arm covering the uh, license plate. And I don't want to say anything about the arm, but it does look like he's a husky boy. Looks like he's one of them Busa boys, okay? I don't want to say anything, but all I'm saying is he's one of them Busa boys. All right, that's a husky arm. That's, that's a big arm right there, man. Uh, kind of nuts that you want 
12 grand for a 10 year old motorcycle. I understand it's a stock Suzuki Hayabusa, so that's definitely rare as it is. Uh, typically Hayabusas are uh, all modified from what I've seen. Um, this has been a bit of a trend here on the Chicago Craigslist. There's quite a few Hayabusas on here, quite a few of them Busa boys ready to drag you into the ground uh, with their souped up rides. Um, as far as Hayabusas go, it looks really, really clean. I'm not gonna lie, for a 10 year old bike, it's in great shape, but come on, dude, 12 grand? 12 grand for Hayabusa? I don't think so. I would, I would give you like maybe five or six grand for this. It's a 10 year old motorcycle, right? Like, what's the odometer? It's got 10,000 miles on the clock, which is relatively low, honestly, but still, man, still too much, too much. Moving on. So this one I thought was really cool. This is a 2000 MV Agusta F4. Um, if you're not familiar, MV Agusta is an Italian motorcycle manufacturer uh, that is like super limited in production, has kind of seen a lot of uh, like financial troubles over the years, has I think gone bankrupt once or twice and sort of been resuscitated from the ground up. Uh, what they're known for is making these just like jaw droppingly beautiful motorcycles. like. They are known for single-sided swing arms, insane sort of aesthetics and looks. Um, they have two sort of flagship motorcycles, it's the F4 and the F3. The F4 is their sort of premier leader bike, four-cylinder motorcycle. This one's a 750, so I think it's 750 cc's. If I'm wrong, just let me know. I don't know too much about Ambi Agustas. And then they also make the F3, which is a three-cylinder uh, version of the same sort of mill and bike and all that. And I think it's the same chassis too because I see the uh, same sort of look and feel on it. Um, this thing's in crazy good shape. For a 2000, crazy good shape. Uh, looks like there's only a thousand miles on the clock. Um, so it's, it's basically brand new. Um, at this point, it's almost like a, a classic motorcycle. It's 18 years old. Um, what I really like about these is they have the sort of quad exhaust at the rear that you can get with some aftermarket stuff. Like I know that some of the aftermarket exhausts for the R1s have this like sort of quad pipe, but these came stock with the quad pipe, which is really sick. Um, MV is such an interesting and cool bike. I've never seen such a nice one on Craigslist, dude. Like this is pretty crazy. And you, God damn, you just got to think like this thing came out in 2000. Like this must have looked like the absolute most futuristic motorcycle in the year 2000 when it came out. Even to, it still looks fresh today. Like if you look at this bike, besides the tail looking a bit fat, you, you, you could place this among any current leader bike and it would look relevant. Uh, the dash is obviously a little dated. I mean, the new dashes for uh, leader bikes are all like the TFT displays, LCDs, got the cool like screens and all that. This is still like analog tachometer. Really, really cool listing. But 11 grand, honestly, like I, 11 grand sounds like a lot of money, but it's such a perfect example of an MV. I kind of think it's worth it. Um, this thing's sick. Crazy that this is on Craigslist. Crazy. Super nice bike. Moving on, 10 out of 10. This one I thought was pretty cool. Uh, this is a 1999 Suzuki SV650 um, for 2,400 bucks, gets it done. Uh, the SV650 I think is possibly one of the finest beginner bikes you can get because it's got plenty of torque that you can have fun with. It's not gonna be some gutless 250 that you're gonna get bored of within like six months. Um, it looks cool, you know, it's got a cool like Street Fighter kind of look to it. There's like so many parts available for it, it's kind of crazy because uh, Suzuki made like millions of these bikes. You can find them anywhere. This is a really clean example of one of them, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, looks like it was well taken care of. The other really cool thing about the Suzuki SV650 is it has uh, a V-twin on it. It might be an L-twin, not exactly sure if there's a difference there but it's got a really great rumble to it. Uh, it's a bike that you can be proud of owning. This one's really cool. It looks like the owner really took care of it. It's got the tank grips on it. it looks nice and clean. Uh, yeah, I think you could do a lot worse in terms of beginner bikes than this. 2,400 bucks gets it done. That's a bike you can ride for two years easy. Enjoy it, low maintenance. This is great. Uh, so this guy says, selling an awesome 1999 Suzuki SV650. Bike's in great shape and low mileage for its age. Runs great and never had any issues. It's only got 13K on the clock, that's pretty great. Uh, only selling because I don't have as much time to ride, looking for a better home, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you could do a lot worse for beginner bikes than this, man. That's a great listing. Uh, this is 
You know, I usually try to find funny and goofy listings, but Chicago's done pretty good so far. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. 2011 Suzuki Hayabusa, 9,500 bucks. Uh, this is it, boys. This is another one of them Busa boys right here. <laughs> you can't, I mean, how, how can you deny it, right? This one has the, uh, God, like, uh, the, the graphics on the Hayabusa are just something else, aren't they? You, you got this like spray paint graffiti looking Japanese lettering on it. The, the Hayabusa is in a class of its own, isn't it? Um, this one's a bit more modified than the other one. Uh, actually got a, quite a bit of modifications. It says reduced price, tastefully modified by Brock's full Brock's header, Brock's alien head, Brock's remap, Brock's window, Brock's, 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 Brock. <laughs> he says, runs like a mofo and is much quicker than my 2009 Suzuki Hayabusa that I also own in Florida. Of course you live in Florida. Of course you have another Hayabusa. You're one of them Bosa boys. Of course you do. That's great. Have too many bikes ready to sell. That's never a problem, my friend. You always want more bikes than you can handle. That's for sure. 9,500 gets it done for this one. Not a bad price for the level of modification that's on it. Um... This one also looks like it only has about 10,000 miles on it, which is great. I think it's going to run perfectly fine. And if you're looking for one of them Busa boys, if you're, if you're trying to be a Busa boy yourself, this is your ticket in. Already done, ready to go. Moving on. Uh, we got a 1968 Sears motorcycle for 500 bucks. Um, wow, this looks like a gigantic piece of shit. If you guys didn't know, Sears back in like, I think the 50s and 60s and 40s, like in the mid of the, about halfway through the 20th century, they were like the Amazon of their day. Sears made and sold like anything and everything you could find. They didn't have as many storefronts, I don't think, but they had like a mail order catalog where you could just buy anything you wanted to. It was literally like the Amazon of like the 50s. Um, so I guess they also made motorcycles, which is insane. Like this is literally a Sears branded motorcycle, uh, kind of bonkers. Um, I can guarantee you if you can get it to run, it'll run like absolute trash. Uh, this looks like a terrible motorcycle. Um, looks like all the components on it are really cheap. You know, kind of an interesting history piece, I guess, if you wanted to do that. Uh, it says it's been kept in a garage in a basement since 1983. That is longer than I've been alive, my dudes. That is crazy. Uh, yeah, 500 bucks though, and you got yourself a, a weird little oddball. So, I mean, kind of worth it in my opinion. This one I thought was great solely because of the seat that it has on it. This is a 1978 Yamaha XS1100. Quite a few XS1100s on Craigslist, not gonna lie. It's sort of like a, I've seen quite a few of these. I used to think they were rare. I don't think they're rare anymore. I love the the wavy, gigantic, quilted leather banana seat that's on this motorcycle. Um, I would love to just pop that sucker off and make a piece of furniture out of it. That sounds like a great thing. This thing's relatively clean though. Uh, I think for 700 bucks, looks awesome. Uh, this guy says, it ran great, then it went into gear on its own when revving up. <laughs> now it's time for you to take it and go kill yourself when you ride it. <laughs> Took it apart and looks like internally the fork bent or broke as mess with it to get in neutral but needs work. Seat alone, I just paid $110. Seat alone, I just paid $1,110. No, oh, I can't talk today. Seat alone, I just paid $110 off eBay for it. Price is firm, comes with the title. I may part it out if I get enough interested people. God, I got the yammy acid reflux today. Ah, uh, apparently something is, you know, cataclysmically wrong with this bike and that it's going into a gear on its own whenever you're riding it, so that's not a good sign. But for 700 bucks, I think you could have a really fun time with this thing, honestly. This is it right here, dudes. $1,000, Ninja 250, banana yellow. You look like a ripe little, oh, what is what is this? Got the third photo here. Uh, a polo Ralph Lauren hat uh, adorned on this motorcycle. That's wonderful. This thing is possibly the cleanest 250 I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen them in yellow like this either. This is crazy. For $1,000, this thing is, is basically new. Uh, it's only got 10,000 miles on it. Dude, honestly, you could buy this and make it a perfect little track bike just to goof around with. It's basically disposable. It's only a grand. That's crazy. Uh, this guy says, has a new oil change, never been wrecked, original plastics, brand new battery, brand new tires, uh, hasn't been put on yet. They'll include them in the sale. Dude, for the tires alone and the new battery, this is almost worth $1,000. Like, that's crazy. Um, this is possibly the cleanest 250 I've ever seen on Craigslist. Not going to lie. I am hoping that it comes with the Ralph Lauren hat though. 
That would be great. Moving on. Oh God, uh, it's an abomination. Um, the 2016 R1M wants nearly 18 grand for it. Uh, it's wrapped in the most horrible wrap I've ever seen in my life. Although it does look like it has some pretty decent parts on it. I see some woodcraft covers, a uh, couple bits and bobs here and there. I think, you know, it's kind of crazy because this is an R1M, so this is like the actual like race spec edition with the data logger and the Olins and blah, 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 and all the goodies on it. It's got a Graves exhaust. Really sick bike without the wrap, but this wrap has absolutely ruined it for me. <laughs> Also, why would you wrap an R1M? That bike comes with the most sick colorway ever. It's got that aluminum tank and the blue and the, oh, why would you do this to this bike? It's a well done wrap. It's not trashy looking, but you kind of ruined it with the wrap. I'm not gonna lie. This guy says, this motorcycle is a wrap that was designed by Hug Sticker, professionally installed by the toy shop. If you choose to remove the wrap, it'll have the original paint and mint condition underneath. It's probably gonna be a pain in the dick to take all this wrap off. My God, that's a lot. It's even on the fenders too. Oh, why would you cover the carbon fiber with a wrap? Why? Oh God, why do people do this? Oh man. Yeah, hard pass on this one. This one I thought was really cool. It's a 1973 Kawasaki Z1 900. Uh, the Z1 is one of those uh, old school, like UJM style bikes. Uh, one of the first sort of like big bore four cylinder motorcycles. Really, really cool bike. This one seems to be in, in mint shape. Um, really clean. It looks like a couple modifications here and there to kind of keep it running and all that. Pretty low mileage, um, 658 miles on it. And it must be redone for the mileage because there's no way that bike only has 600 miles on it. This guy says, this bike is known as the world's first super bike and this one specifically is upgraded as it make it still viable today. All custom work done by Scooter Shooters, Hot Rods and Motorcycles. That's a, a fantastic name. Uh, bottom end is stock 900, jugs and pistons from a KZ1000, blah, blah, blah. Received some refinement in April. Sits a little bit lower than stock. So he's got a couple things done to it here and there. Uh, this dude wants 14 grand for it though. That's, oh, that's, that's really pricey. Kind of nuts on that one. Um, but I mean, man, what a cool classic motorcycle though. Here's the thing, I think you could buy, like sometimes people will gawk at the prices for these bikes, right? Like these older classic, like retro modded sort of things. Um, and they're like, my God, why would I pay 14 grand for one of these bikes? But at the same time, you, you could totally buy yourself like a Project Z1, a Kawasaki Z1, right? From, from the 70s and for, for like two or three grand and then spend, you know, months and months and months modifying it and building it and doing this and that, you'll probably get a greater sense of satisfaction at the end of it, I think, at the end of your journey of kind of building it back up and making it cool. But if you just want that classic look, I think you're better off just like buying one of those like uh, Triumph new classics or I mean the BMW R9T, it's a similar price to this kind of stuff. And, and I think you're gonna have modern performance and modern amenities. So I don't really understand the market that these exist in, right? Like, cause if you wanted a classic bike, you would just do it yourself. And if you wanted to spend 14 grand on a bike that looked classic, you would just get one of these, you know, retro modded or retro classics or modern classic, modern retro, you know what I'm talking about, those bikes. You would just do that instead. So I'm not really sure where these fit in. And this is just a car that's on the Craigslist. Uh, it's a 1967 Impala Super Sport Classic, 31 grand. Don't know why it's here, but it's it's just, uh, it's just here. So you done goofed. We got a 1987 Honda Hurricane CBR 600 F1. Um, I have never heard of this motorcycle, of the Hurricane. I assume that it's a predecessor of like the F4i or something like that. Honda made, I might be talking out of my ass here, but I'm pretty sure that Honda made a like more upright variant of the CBR back in like the 80s and the 90s called like the F4i, if I'm not mistaken. It has the CBR 600 engine, but it's like more of an upright motorcycle, more like, you know, comfortable to ride and type of stuff, but it is fully flared, but it is fully fared. So you have that going for it. This guy says it's the original CBR 600 F, which is Honda's first inline four cylinder, fully fared sport bike. Uh, yeah, I guess fully fared. You're right, but it's not their first inline four cylinder bike. Definitely not. You gotta love the color scheme on this, you know, bright uh, red and blue, definitely gonna pop out. Um, 
I mean, 500 bucks though, it's basically free. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. This one I thought was great. This is something I wanted to chat with you guys about. Uh, so this is a 2013 Suzuki DRZ 400SM Supermoto. Got a ton of mods done to it. Really clapped out Supermoto. Wants 5,200 bucks. Um, I am of the opinion, and I know that not, not everyone's gonna agree with me on this, but I am of the opinion that if you want a Supermoto, you should just buy someone else's project Supermoto. Um, it's gonna be so much cheaper than buying a dual sport and then converting it to a supermoto. These supermotos, dude, sometimes you can spend up to like 10 grand getting these things all prepped and ready. Like, so for example, if you bought like a, a WR450 um, and you, you know, made it into a supermoto, you could easily spend 10 grand doing that between the wheels and the tires and the, and all the little bits and bobs that you need to actually convert it to a supermoto and then getting it like road registered and all that you're way better off just buying someone else's project Supermoto and then just kind of fixing it and making it better. You do run the risk of it being one of those, you know, you never really quite know what you're gonna get when you're buying a bike off Craigslist. Um, it could have gremlins in the, in, in the engine or the suspension that make it kind of shitty, but I think for the price reduction you're getting for it, it's way, way, way worth it. So this one looks to be in great shape. Uh, Suzuki makes from the factory the DRZ as a Supermoto. You actually can get the DRZ 400 SM in a Supermoto variant, but this guy looks like he's gone the extra mile and done all the little bits and bobs to actually make it into a Supermoto. Um, I really like how this one has the more dual sport, like chunky tires. It's not the, the slick kind of Supermoto tires you normally see, which makes it so you can still kind of use it off-road a little bit, not as much because it's not full knobbies, right? They're sort of that in-between tire. Um, so this guy says, bike's in beautiful shape with no flaws, been meticulously cared for, uh, take detailed photos of it. And this is something I love to see on Craigslist is when someone has like, upwards of 20 photos of the bike. It's been taken on an actual camera. The, the lighting is correct and it, you have close-up shots of it. This thing's in great shape, like great, 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 great shape. Um, he lists out all the mods, like everything is, is ready to go here. Like this is the kind of listing that makes my soul happy. You know, <laughs> like this is great. Um, this is a super clean supermoto. So yeah, I think if you guys are looking in this class of bike, Definitely check out Craigslist, try to find someone else's project, and then go from there. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. I post up just about every week. Um, sometimes life gets in the way and I can't, but every week I try to put out some cool stuff for you guys to check out. Um, and I'll catch you next time. See you later.